WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight at 6. I'm Scott Martin. It's that time of year. Many start thinking of New Year's resolutions. Well, this year the city of Columbus is on board after finding itself in an $881,000 hole. At the December 18th council meeting, members voted to place a freeze on spending. However, that raised a few red flags. This morning, council voted to lift that freeze, and they're making plans for this fiscal year. How can you operate the city uh, with a freeze on spending of everything? Uh, it's no way for you to operate. A freeze on the city's budget basically meant a city shutdown. This morning, council members voted to rescind that freeze. But that still doesn't fix the $881,000 deficit the city is in. Mayor Smith says he's talked to all department heads concerning the budget shortfall. We have to be more frugal in our spending, even from the mayor and the council standpoint, as far as travel. So how did we get to this point? Mayor Smith says travel expenses and overtime in the police and fire departments were the biggest expenditures. That was the buck as far as uh, on travel, the mayor and the council, more than uh, the department heads. Cutbacks on traveling has already happened. The mayor says the midwinter MML trip in January has already been canceled. As far as overtime goes, Mayor Smith says the fire department has mandatory overtime hours to meet. Other times, overtime hours will just happen. If it's a homicide, uh, any emergency type situation uh, that occur, they're going to be overtime. I mean, and that's uh, understood. To stay out of the negative, council voted this morning to form a committee that will monitor the city's spending budget each month. We'll look at it closely from a month to month standpoint and then uh, as far as the spending and then uh, we'll give that uh, a, a copy of what we discuss to the council meeting. Now, that committee will be the mayor, chief operating officer, chief financial officer, and two council members. And Mayor Smith also says that overtime will also include security for special events. Well, hopefully, Public Works won't be putting in any of that overtime, cleaning up storm damage, but the wind and rain has been blowing through all afternoon. For the latest, we turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson with tonight's first look. Hey, Keith. It is a wet evening out there. A live view in downtown Columbus shows the wet weather we do have here at 603. Really southeast of the trace, we still have some moderate to heavy rainfall, some embedded thunder and lightning to the northwest. We actually squeeze out a little bit of a sunset. Heavier storms down to our south and southern Mississippi and southern Alabama, but still some additional rain trying to redevelop and move back on in here. The flash flood watch continues for the Golden Triangle area and point south and east. We may still see another one to two plus inches of rain in these areas, especially southeast of the trace. We've already had about one to three across our area today. Tonight, lows down into the 50s. Currently, in the mid to upper 50s, so basically holding city for a good chunk of the night. Not as windy later on. It will dry a little bit tomorrow, but the rain's coming on back for the weekend, Scott. More in just a few minutes. All right, thanks very much, Keith. Well, with strong thunderstorms and heavy winds coming into the Golden Triangle area, many residents worry about power outages. At least one area power company is taking a proactive approach. Our Blair Schaefer, she joins us live in the studio with more. Scott, for over 80 years, Four County has used the right of way program. This program allows them to make it safer and faster for Four County to restore power outages when they do occur. I spoke with an expert this morning to find out more. With over 5,000 miles of line and weather that is constantly changing, Four County continues to have their hands full. Severe thunderstorms have been the problem lately. The strong winds do pose problems for trees uh, because they're they're tall and they'll. They, they try to take that wind, and sometimes they can, and sometimes they don't. And when trees don't take the wind well, that's when power outages occur. Lynn Timbrook, an engineer at Fort County, says wet ground doesn't help either. The ground is wet, and the trees, uh, the root systems, are trying to hold, but if the ground is not strong enough, then they'll fall. It, given a certain amount of wind in the right direction, then they'll fall, and, and sometimes they fall and hit our power lines. But Fort County doesn't wait for damage to occur before going to work. They stay proactive through the right-of-way program. This program is made up of utility workers who are constantly trimming trees on the edges of the 30-foot right-of-way zone around power lines. We will go through with the mechanical equipment, bucket trucks or uh, device, a vehicle we call a giraffe that has a, a long uh, arm on it that with a saw on the end of it, they can get pretty high in the trees. 
And, of course, we have men that climb and do things that those equipment can't get to. One aspect that helps this program thrive is four counties' members. Timbrook says without their communication, it would be difficult to maintain over 5,000 miles of line. They tell us all the time uh, that they've got you know, a tree that, that they want us to look at to cut. They get, they're afraid that it might fall and things like that. So that gives us an opportunity to be in different places pretty much all across our territory to uh, observe what's going on. Timbrook's team takes preventative measures. However, power outages are still possible. This possibility drives him to further develop the right-of-way program and find new ways to minimize larger outages. We would much rather not have them happen, and that's why we're, we're doing this, and uh, that's why we're trying to do it as well as we can. Over the past 10 years, the minutes per power, power outage has decreased, leading Ford County to believe that their new preventative measures are leading them in the right direction. Scott. The man accused of shooting a sheriff's son makes his first court appearance today. Bond was set at $350,000 for David Hampton of Meridian. He's charged with attempted murder and possession of a weapon by a convicted felon. The Mississippi Department of Corrections will place a hold on Hampton, meaning he will continue to stay in jail. Hampton is accused of shooting Roman Maddox in the chest back on December 21st near North and MLK Streets in Macon. Maddox is the son of Knoxville County Sheriff Terry Grassery. Police Chief Devine Beck says Jamisha Irvin and Terrence Pfeiffer are both being charged with accessory after the fact. They have already been to court and are released on bond. A Tishomingo County man is accused of killing his wife. Russell Lanier is now charged with first degree murder. His wife, Susie Lanier, was reported missing on June 7th of 2017. Now, that August, Tishomingo County deputies received a call from a man who say he found what appeared to be a human skull on his property. Dental records confirmed it was Susie Lanier on Christmas Eve. Investigators got new information about the case and arrested Russell Lanier on Wednesday. He remains in jail on a $500,000 bond. A dispute in Starkville has a man facing domestic violence charges. 26-year-old Joe Isaac Jr. is charged with domestic violence aggravated assault. Starkville PD say the incident occurred Wednesday at Brooksville Garden Apartments. Isaac's bond is set at 10 grand, and police are asking anyone with information to call Starkville police. A Columbus man is accused of assaulting his girlfriend. 27-year-old Damian Lamar Griffin is charged with aggravated domestic violence. Lowndes County deputies say the incident happened back on December 22nd on Harrison Road. The 30-year-old victim was taken to the hospital for treatment. Griffin's bond was set at $10,000. And in Boonville, a Boonville man who didn't want to face the police is now facing the music. Prentice County deputies attempted to pull over James Ray Lambert, but he refused to stop. When he did, eventually he pulled over. He ran into nearby woods. A deputy caught up with Lambert, who reportedly had over $1,000 of counterfeit money. He was also charged with possession of a controlled substance and possession of marijuana and a motor vehicle, as well as several other traffic violations. His bond is set at $2,500. The Christmas season is in the middle of flu season. When we come back, we check in with experts to find out about this year's buck. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. If the government shutdown continues, some good news here. The State Department of Health will still be able to provide assistance for agencies. The agency's special supplemental nutrition program for women, infants, and children, or known as WIC, will remain open through the month of January if the shutdown goes on. The United States Department of Agriculture funds WIC. Mississippi State Department of Health officials say there are enough funds in the fiscal year of 2019 to continue providing the services. WIC, ser WIC services or serves rather about 95,000 clients each month. Health leaders are also preparing for future delays in funding if the shutdown goes beyond January. Flu season is officially up on us, and that means people are breaking out their Germex, hoping to stop the virus. But while it seems to be ramping up across the nation, here in the Golden Triangle, there have been a few cases here and there, but nothing compared to last year's season. Doctors and pharmacists are still encouraging people to get the flu shot if you have not already. While they hope the flu continues to stay mild this year, you still need to take preventative action. We've had a few flu cases this year. I have not seen a very tough flu season like last year. Last year was a very, very uh, difficult, bad flu season um, nationwide, but particularly hard hit in Mississippi, and it lasted quite a while. Uh, this year we've had a few flu cases, but not near to the extent of last year. A lot of strip, 
very little flu. Well, You're baby. making me a little nervous. <laughs> Obama <laughs> says the flu one, might two, start picking up again in the next couple of weeks once any. school starts back up. That's good. Windy day around the region, some downed trees like that one right there in the Columbus area. We've had some wind gusts between 30 and 40 miles per hour today. The winds relax a little bit this evening and tonight. The rain will go away later tonight. Your full forecast is next. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Let's go to downtown Louisville, Mississippi. Today, our exclusive Alpha Insurance Camera Network. You can see this line of storms and showers right there. Gusty wind, heavy downpours, and then some persistent rain with some embedded thunder and lightning as we've gone throughout the last couple of hours. The back edge teasing some areas, but it stretches from near Kosciuszko to Eupor to southeast of Tupelo. Southeast of that line, still some persistent rain, some steadier rain, uh, even some street flooding reported in parts of the Columbus area tonight. We've had about one to three inches of rain overall across our region today. Uh, the radar may be underestimating some of this, but it's been a soaker so far on our Thursday, and we still may squeeze out another one to two inches or more, especially southeast of that demarcation line we just showed you with the radar. So that is why there's still a flash flood watch for our southeastern counties and not just here, but all the way from Louisiana into the Appalachians right now. Some very wet weather with this system as it's moving on through the region. Notice the back edge. We actually squeezed out a little bit of a burst of color there with the setting sun in our northwestern counties tonight. You may have seen that. We do have some clearing out here in Arkansas and Louisiana. We do expect that to come on in here sometime tomorrow morning, but right now in the near term, still some soggy weather, the heaviest weather, the heaviest storms down to our southeast, but we will continue to have this rain move on in, especially across our southeastern zones this evening and tonight. Notice how we'll get rid of most of that, I think, by the morning commute tomorrow. Still some clouds around, but the heaviest rain should be done by 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. And then if we can uh, really get that thing out of here, we'll see a lot of sunshine throughout the course of our afternoon and dry things out. We need it because we'll have another couple of rounds of rain coming our way. Saturday morning, all quiet here, but notice how the clouds will build back in. The showers return Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. They will continue into our Sunday right here. And we'll have more rain as we get into early next week, too, on Monday with another system coming our way as we close out the year. Tonight, we're looking at lows in the northwest near Oxford around 50, mid to upper 50 southeast, areas of rain, especially in the southeast, but not as windy. Those winds gradually will relax and not as windy tomorrow either. 50s to start out. We're thinking some low 60s across a good chunk of our area tomorrow, perhaps a little bit warmer in the southeast, a little bit cooler in the northwest. But notice how we are plotting some sun icons there. Let's just hope we can dry things out a little bit for a brief spell. Here's our AccuWeather 7-day forecast. We stay unsettled here Saturday into your Sunday, Monday. Now, it looks like Monday could actually be a little bit warmer. Some models are indicating some 70s here as we close out the year. Not that robust on the temperature yet. We'll see, but there could be some more heavier rain and some storms around. And then a sharply cooler and drier air mass as we start 2019. 59, or 52 rather on New Year's Day, only 40 to 45 Wednesday and Thursday. The Bulldogs have officially made it to the Sunshine State. More on all the action coming up next in sports. For WCBI Sports with Courtney Robb is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Well, Mississippi State has officially made it to Florida with the Outback Bowl coming up in a few days. And we were able to actually catch up with the Bulldogs earlier today to see what they've been up to since their arrival in the Sunshine State. The ability to, to compartmentalize and uh, make sure when it's time for football and most of those things are in the morning, you know, right around from the 8 o'clock until, you know, right around just past noon that we're focusing on football. Uh, and then when it's time for fun, we've got the hockey game tonight, some other events throughout the, the course of the week that they're concentrating on having fun, but being able to turn the football switch on and off and turn the have fun switch on and off and, and make sure that the too much fun ain't taken away from the too much football. We're like way more experience, you know, going to the game. Very focused, trusting my ability. Last year, I was questioning myself, so hoping to play good in front of a lot of people. When we're doing stuff with football, you're 100% locked into football. That's the only thing that matters. The second that last whistle blows, go have all the fun you want. You know, go, go do whatever you need to do. Be back before curfew. Make sure you're looking over your notes and, and uh, practice film from that day. But I mean, when it's football time, it's football. And when, when it's time to have fun, you know, go let loose and enjoy. You know what we've earned. 
Well, it's the second day for Slam Dunk at the Hump, getting it started. The Louisville girls and Naxby County. Louisville up five. Ariana Hunter finds a deer. Tompkins in the quarter. She drains the mid-range jumper to extend the lead seven to nothing. Knoxby trying to answer on back. Adijah Williams driving up the court. She pulls up from the wing, and that shot's going to be good for her. We'll see some more action coming from Louisville. Kirsten Ball getting the ball to the inside, turns, misses the jumper, but Lamaya Pfeiffer there for the rebound and the score. Knoxby County, though, unable to fight back in this one. Louisville would go on to get another win, the final 63 to 16. The Starkville girls, on the other hand, facing Olive Branch in a 2017 6A title rematch. Early on, Starkville down by five. Outlaw driving to the hoop and finishing off to cut the lead to three. A little bit later, Brianna Young driving to the rim. She's going to be able to score for two there. And still in the first, Starkville trying to make something happen off the fast break. And Maria Strong driving. She scores inside, gets the two points there. It was a back and forth game, ladies and gents, all game long. Young finding outlaw, though. She drives, gets the shot to go, grabs the and one while she's at it. A little bit later, we'll see some great basketball. Outlaw getting a steal here. She'd go all the way to the other end, the other coast, but the block by Enya Buford. A beautiful block to save that, but it wouldn't be enough. Starkville would go on to get the win over Olive Branch. And this one, a final of 57 to 54. We'll also have some more highlights from Starkville facing the Itawamba AHS boys coming up later. And we'll also have basketball coming for you all throughout the weekend. Plenty of tournament action going on for sports. But that's going to be it for sports. We'll have your last look coming up next. Live view with our Alpha Insurance Camera Network, you can see the clouds and the wet weather, especially south and east of Tupelo Sky. You can see the radar right here. Still has soaking rain in some spots. Some of you, though, have dried it out. And that general drying trend will take over for all of us here later tonight into our Friday. Rain will return, though, this weekend. And we're looking at some more storms possible just in time to say goodbye to 2018 and hello to 2019. Hard to believe. I know. Gosh. A year has gone by. It's just crazy. So just a rainy night and a rainy few weeks. Or yeah, days, good right? <laughs> yeah, good night. Just to lay in bed and watch a little TV. Right, sounds good. Thanks, Keith. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Have a good evening. We'll see you right back here tonight at 10.